How's it going guys? So I'm finally getting back to you with the manga haul for September and October. I'll try to get through this quicker than I did my graphic novel haul. So let me get right into it. Starting with three hardcovers. First up I have a Yukito Kishiro's Battle Angel Alita Volume 5. Final volume. For some reason I thought this was going to go for six volumes but this is the final one. And I think the best part, besides getting the conclusion to Battle Angel of Alita, is uh, Kodansha actually bundled this with uh, Ash and Victor. So you're getting um, the uh, spin-off that Kishiro did about Motorball. And uh, takes up almost half of the volume. I've been meaning to hunt it down, but thankfully I don't have to now. And the next hardcover, this I found at a local comic book shop. They had just moved, and I guess they pulled out some of their uh, back stock. And uh, I had heard that Tokyo Pop did uh, hardcovers, but never actually saw one. But I found uh, Clamp's Shirahime Sho. It's a single volume series with uh, about four chapters. All, that all have to uh, deal with uh, the Snow Princess or the Legend of the Snow Princess. And in the beginning here we have some nice colored pages. Very typical clamp art. It was very nice. I think it's a shoujo. It might be a Jose. I'm not sure. But it felt like it was oriented towards a female audience. And a final hardcover here. You might have guessed it. It is Erased. Volume 5, or Erase Re, I think, uh, is what the original title was. And this is a couple of short stories that focus on the friends of uh, Satoru while he was in a coma, which was pretty good. It was great to uh, revisit the characters and what they were doing during that time. It was a great mystery manga. Now that we're done with the hardcovers, we move on to the regular releases. First up, I have ACCA 13, Volume 4, by Natsume Ono. It's a fun uh, drama, political drama. And uh, I've become a fan of uh, Natsume Ono and her work. It's probably not for everyone. It's kind of a, a slow burn. But if you like Ono, I would say it's a good read. I move on to the only Viz title I picked up. That would be Mobile Suit Gundam Thunderbolt Volume 8 by Yasuo Tagaki. And uh, they show off a Zogok here in the back, which sadly only appears in like two panels in the whole manga. But I did like that the volume concentrated more on the uh, handicapped soldiers and their struggle in life and basically a lot of characters that have uh, suffered uh, some kind of injury in war. Next I got a couple more from Kodansha besides Battle Angel. I have To Your Eternity Volume 6 by Yoshitoki Oima and I believe Volume 7 is already out. I just uh, haven't gone out and picked it up. It's one of the mangas that I enjoy reading. It's an interesting read. I like how how every volume kind of ends for me, but I don't really want to pick it up afterwards. <laughs> I don't know why. And the next uh, Kodansha book I picked up was uh, Colosseum Volume 3 by Yasushi Baba with these uh, great covers that are I believe for the English edition only. I've seen the Japanese covers and of course these just make it even more of a parody <laughs> than it should be. In Putinov's Russia, weapons fire you. Hmm. Fun stuff. Pretty hilarious, especially when it comes to Putinov. <laughs> they do some weird stuff with them. But moving on, I was watching uh, Mr. Jim Graves first October haul I believe it was his first he has so many hauls up tons of unboxings 
but when I saw that he pulled this out of the box, I almost immediately drove out to the store and picked it up. That is Apple Seams by Stomunihe. I already read through uh, the first chapter, 80 pages of the first chapter. That that's a that's a pretty big uh, first chapter in my opinion. <laughs> And I was kind of worried that uh, since this was uh, qualified as a shonen, that maybe Nihei kind of lost his edge. Or, but no, he still get the brutal graphic stuff that Nihei is pretty much known for. I am kind of uh, disappointed that Vertical changed the trim size. I would have uh, preferred that they kept the uh, the trim size for. Uh, Knights of Sidonia. I'm not sure why they went bigger. I mean, it's nice that it's bigger, but it's kind of inconsistent with uh, with the Knights of Sidonia. But that's just me, though. I move on. So along with the hardcover of uh, Chirahime Sho that I found at the uh, comic shop, I also found this two-volume series. It is Record of Lotus Wars, Lady of Ferris, Volume 1 and 2, Complete. In uh, this two volumes, it is scripted by Ryo Mizuno, with art by Akihiro Yam Yamada. And uh, if you've watched or read any of the other Record of Lotus Wars, you'll pretty much know that it is the perfect mix of, I guess, manga and Dungeons and Dragons, and. Uh, Lady of Ferris was pretty much that. It was about the Lady of Ferris here, or the Lady from Ferris, who goes out on a quest to save Lotos from uh, from the evil that has been released. And along her quest, she comes across knights, warriors, and monks, and dwarves, and elves, and all that good stuff. It was a great read. When I first picked it up, I was kind of a kind of worried that it read uh, from left to right as any English publication would. Since it was a manga, I was like, why is it flipped? And it wasn't according to the editor's note. It was orig originally written from uh, left to right. So, And the only other thing I've actually seen from uh, Yamada would be Lost Continent. It was a six issue prestige format release by uh, Eclipse Comics. So if you come across something like uh, Lost Continent, I would say it's a pretty good story. But I'm sure if you can't find a Lady of Ferris, you probably won't be able to find Lost Continent. <laughs> and then I have two more volumes to go. Actually, two more volumes in English. You know me. But the first one up is uh, Get a Robo Devolution Volume 2 by the same creators that gave us Ultraman. And Volume 2 was pretty good. We start getting more into the characters. They start explaining more of the story and we get this whole thing about multiple universes you know alternate universes which kind of makes sense if you're gonna do a manga about a show you know there's a great line in here that is like you know you're a pilot here in a getter and in every other universe you're also a pilot in a getter <laughs> so it's like it was like really that's a pretty good explanation it's been a lot of fun i mean if you enjoyed Ultraman and what they're doing in Ultraman, I, I would say this is a little bit uh, more exciting. I don't know. It feels like a better start to the series, even though I really enjoyed how how they handled the new Ultraman take and, and all that. Finally, for my English releases, for the English releases, I have Ajin, Volume 12, Kamon Sakurai gives us a action-packed volume here. Super fantastic. <laughs> he does some great 
great shots of action and graphic violence. It's very brutal. It's, I think this is the most uh, carnage I've seen in in a, probably any manga. But it was great. And the best part, if you've been reading this and you remember the barrels, they go back to the barrels. Yeah. Great stuff. It feels like it's coming to a close, but I have no idea how far we are from the end. So that was pretty much what I picked up in English. I do have a couple more volumes in Spanish if you want to stick around for that. So let's get right into it. First up, I picked up, this is from Ponon Mont actually. It is La Bestia by Hideki Mori. If you've been reading New Lone Wolf and Cub, you'll probably be familiar with Hideki Mori. I think it's the only release that he has in English. But I figured I'd pick this up. It is a single volume. And I believe it's a single volume because it got cancelled. Did I say the title in English? The Beast? Or the original title? Shishi? And like I said, it was it was cancelled. He did, what is it, four chapters? And they all deal with this uh, young vagrant who walks around the countryside dragging around a giant stick and uh, causing a lot of trouble. He has problems with his father. He has an inappropriate relationship with his sister. And uh, his name, what's his name? Benoske. He goes by Benoske here. These four chapters basically sh show him kind of what he's going through till he gets to the final chapter here, which is Sakigahara, Sekigahara, which is a very famous battle that takes place during the, I don't know what, what era, but if you recognize his name, Benosuke and Sekigahara, you, you probably will be able to uh, figure out who the, who this character is supposed to be. Great stuff by uh, Mori. If you've read any part of Love Wolf and Cub, his style is less uh, refined than in Lone Wolf and Cub. It's more expressive. And uh, finally, I picked up some volumes to end a couple series here. I picked up the last two volumes of uh, Kuro by Somato, volume two and three. It was only a three volume series. I believe it was a web manga to begin with. And what can I say? It was fun. It's a cute story about this girl and her cat and monsters. It did uh, seem a little moe. Is that the word still? With all the cute characters. But I enjoyed it for what it was. It was a, it was a fun read and it was a simple story but with a little twist. The last uh, volume I picked up for the haul. That would be the second volume of uh, Bajo un Cielo como unos Pantis, volume two by Shuno Mezawa, volume two. An SSA release. I enjoyed the first volume. It was very interesting, graphic and raw. The second volume, had less sexual content, I guess, but it was still very mature, still a lot of uh, very uh, adult stories. This character in the back here is one of the main main protagonists in a couple of the stories here, and uh, it's uh, it's some uh, graphic stuff, some very interesting stuff there. I don't know if I should say more. I mean, I don't know if it'll ever get a release. He has a, a few words at the end where he kind of explains how unpopular his stuff is, even in Japan, I guess. Uh, but still, he manages to collect a couple of his stories there. And he has a couple other collections. So, I don't know, maybe they'll end up uh, getting an English release someday. Keep your eyes out for Mizawa. But there you have it. That was my haul for September and October. I don't know how long this is going to be, but hopefully it won't be too long. But if you stick around to the end, thank you very much for watching. And I guess we'll see you in another couple months or something.